Hey, what's going on, y'all? So a couple of years ago, I was making deep fake tutorials, and a lot of y'all right now are messaging me because there's some videos out there right now with meta humans and deep faking that is pretty much going viral. So some of y'all are asking me what I think of it. So in this video, I'll show you what that tool is, what they're using, and how to get this done. And I'll kind of give you my two cents about this whole thing, all right? So if you go to Iperov's GitHub, Iperov, by the way, is a Russian guy. He's the one who created Deep Face Lab. Uh, now, just a disclaimer, I am not sure what his intentions are as far as using all these data sets and faces and stuff like that. So please just be mindful whenever you're downloading something. So if you go right here, you're going to see in his website, GitHub, you have a Deep Face Lab, which is the traditional old school way that I used to make tutorials about. But now we have a software now called a deep face live and you guessed it sounds just the way it is it's pretty much going to deep fake it live live stream which is bananas in my opinion now people are using meta humans with this right now and that's why it's coming up again in the channel uh if you scroll down i'll show you how to install it all right so right now they only have seven faces pre-trained faces but if you're familiar with dfl you can pre-train it yourself you can find an actor actress whatever and then pre-train that face and then you can use it in deep face live but right now they have seven uh, they have this actress, they got Elon, they got Jim Carrey. If I scroll down right now, you can go to the tutorial, but you're going to download this uh, release, Windows 7. This is fairly new, I would say like maybe six months. And I downloaded the NVIDIA build because that's kind of the GPU I have. And after that, all you have to do is extract it to your drive in the root of your drive. So mine, it's J and then boom, Deep Face Lab. And I'll turn this on right now and let's go ahead and open it. Now, what this is doing, it's actually doing everything automatically. If you're familiar with Reface, it's doing the same exact thing. As you can see, it already opened up. Now, it's not going to open up just like this for you, but already I was playing around with it already with this actress. Um, I'm not sure what I was doing with her. Now, I do have a, my S5 plugged in right now, and that's why you see in this live. But for the sake of this meta human stuff, I'll show you what it is. So I'm going to turn this off, which is the camera source. We're going to go turn the cam. We're going to turn on the file source. And I did upload a video of a meta human inside Maya right now it's just a file that i uploaded and pretty much as you can see it's already taking effect because the faces were pre-trained i'm not sure how many iterations i can only imagine probably a crap ton of iterations right now with the file source leave it as it is with the face detector i used the yolo version 5 and for the device i used my gpu and i changed this to 240 because what you want is you want to get a decent average fps here if not it's going to give away the trick after that i turn on a face aligner left everything by default and you're going to see the aligned face of the meta human character that I have. I believe this is Eevee from my short film. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. And then for the face marker, I use Google Face Mesh. Uh, and then again, the GPU left everything by default. And the face whopper, you're going to see all the models right here, the seven models that they do have pre-trained. So you're looking at that right now. The device, again, GPU. And then turn this on. All, all of this should be good. And then for the stream output, you can either go to the source frame. You can go to the... I usually have the merge frame right now, so you can kind of see them combined. And what that's going to do, it's going to open up this window right here. So I'm going to click on this window, and you're going to see the actual um, meta human in there. Now, it is kind of big. Now, this is stretch, so the resolution is a little bit blurry, so just do keep that in mind right now. So that's good. And what I'll do is I'll play it back. If I press play right here, you're going to see this. Uh, girl right now she's gonna animate in Maya so again people are using this with metahuman right now to get likeness right but at the same time there's some stuff that you kind of have to worry about it as soon as you zoom in on this talent or actor you're gonna lose a lot of fidelity from far away they look really good but whenever you start to do close-ups and stuff like that you're gonna see that it's just a blob blurry it's not gonna have pores or anything any imperfections really so as far as me using this for meta humans, I don't really, I'm not really going to use it, at least for now. Uh, additionally, the problem is it's not really necessarily trying to get likeness onto meta humans. The problems with meta humans is it's very hard to get realistic facial animation. So I'm hoping in two to three months, something will come out, like a tool will come out that uses deep learning and deep learning and machine learning to learn faces similar to this but help us with facial animation because doing it this way you are still responsible in getting photorealistic facial animation and if you're using an iphone to drive this character right now that you see right now it's going to give the trick away you know obviously it's not going to work so again 
Again, this is a really, really cool technology, but as far as metahumans and animation, I really don't have a use for it. So y'all out there might have some uses for it, but as you can see, you still have to drive the faces. You still have to animate the eyes and everything for them to look realistic. Having something look good, still not moving is one thing. You have all these people creating all these beautiful models, but they're not moving. As soon as they open their mouth, as soon as they open their eyes and blinks, it gives the trick away. And again, that's why I don't find this useful as far as, uh, you know, meta human animations and stuff like that. Maybe in the future, it will get better. But right now, I, it's a pretty cool tool. And I uh, obviously clearly watching it, but I really don't have a use for it right now. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and close this out and kind of talk about what else you can kind of use this on. Uh, whenever you're having like FaceTime or something with your family, you can you can prank them because I, I think that's kind of funny, you know, by just turning on, uh, you know, turning the file source on and turning the camera source on, and now you have live FaceTime right here. You can output this onto a FaceTime Zoom meeting. I think that would be hilarious, you know, like, hey guys, what's up? I mean, you have a lot of cool actors. You got Stallone, uh, Margot Robbie, Jim Carrey, Elon Musk. I don't know who that is. And then you got Tim. I think this is Tom Cruise. So you have all of these really cool faces, pre-trained faces that you can use to fool people. And again, it's... It's pretty darn scary. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this technology. I think it's pretty cool, but I'm just hoping that maybe, you know, someday we'll get that tool that actually helps us with facial animation and uh, using deep learning and machine learning.